Question 6 here we're moving on to talk about moments and we have a non-uniform beam meaning that its mass is not acting in the centre. Of weight W has a length of 4 metres, it's held in equilibrium, ropes attached at B and C and we're given some lengths. Now we've got some important information here that can often cause confusion. The tension in the rope attached at C is double the tension in the rope attached at B. Now I often like to think of this as numbers to start with, so the tension in the rope attached at C, so the tension here, is going to be twice as big as the tension in the rope attached at B. So what does that mean? Well, let's call that TC and this one TB. It means that if the tension at B was 1, then the tension at C would be twice as much as that. It would be 2. And when I can see it in numbers, it helps me to sort of put the algebra together because to find the tension at C, I need to multiply the tension at B by 2 because it's twice the tension at B. So the important thing to remember here is that the tension at C is equal to twice the tension at B. Now for my first part of this question, I'm asked to find the distance of the center of mass from A. Now to do that, I'm going to need to do two things, as we usually do with these moments questions. One, I'm going to resolve vertically, and then two, I'm going to take moments. So let's go about doing that. So resolve vertical. Then all the forces that are acting upwards, that's going to be T at B plus T at C. And that's going to be equal to all the forces that are acting downwards, which is W. Now I do have another way of writing this of course because as we established earlier the tension at C is just twice the tension at B. So I could write this as the tension at B plus twice the tension at B is equal to W or 3 lots of the tension at B is equal to W. Now the next thing is to take moments. Now I'm actually asked for the distance of the center of mass from A. So on my diagram Let's just pop back up here, where I'm thinking about the mass, somewhere around here. I want the distance as measured from A. So I'm going to call this distance x, and then for simplicity's sake, I'm going to take moments at A. That way, when I use the distance x, I know that I'm getting it um, as is and won't need to do any manipulation to it. So for my second part here, I'm thinking moments at A. So now I want to be thinking about equilibrium, so my clockwise moments must be equal to my anti-clockwise moments. So let's think about all my moments that are acting clockwise. Well, the only moment that's acting clockwise in this diagram is going to be my weight. So that's going to be force W times by distance X. And then in the anti-clockwise direction, what have we got going on here? Well, I've got my tension at B and I've also got my tension at C and that's going to be a total distance of 3 meters from A so I'm going to have the tension at B times by 1 meter plus the tension at C times by 3 meters. Now again I can substitute in here so I know that's going to be TB. Uh, I knew the tension at C, the tension at C we said was twice the tension at B and this becomes multiplied by 3. Um, I also have from my first bit over here uh, another way that I can write the weight. So I'm going to write this as 3 lots of the tension at B multiplied by X is equal to this side works out to be 7 lots of the tension at B. Now what happens? Well the tension at B cancels and I'm left with X being equal to 7 over 3. So there's my answer 7 over 3 meters. Now in the second part of this question, I'm told about a small load that's being added, uh, attached to the beam at D. The beam remains in equilibrium in a horizontal position. The load is modelled as a particle. Now I think it's important to point out here that even though it's not stated in the question, the tension at C is no longer twice the tension at B. That's because we've changed the system. We've added more mass to the system, so that is no longer the case. Now it's not explicitly stated here, but it is definitely the case. So how would that change our problem? We want to find an expression for the tension in the rope at B and give our answer in terms of K and W. So let's go back to our picture. 
we're going to add a mass at D which is K times W and now what I'm interested in is just finding out the tension at B. I'm not interested at all in the tension at C. Now that tells me something important. It tells me that the easiest thing to do in this question would be to take moments about C because if I take moments at C then I'm not going to get this included in my calculation. So where do we go from here? Well, let's think about moments at C. And again we're going to have the same thing that my clockwise moments are going to be equal to my anti-clockwise moments. Now if I think about all of the moments that are acting clockwise, so from my point C clockwise moments are the weight that has been attached at D and also moving around in that direction is going to be the tension that's acting at B. The only anti-clockwise moment I've got is the weight of the system here. Now I was told, or I've calculated rather in the first part of my question, that x was 7 over 3. I know that the total distance from A to C is 3 metres. And if I do 3 subtract 7 over 3, I'm left with 2 thirds as my distance between the mass at C uh, sorry, the weight and the point C. So there's my two-thirds distance. So my anti-clockwise moments were KW times by 1 and TB times by 2. And tension at B times by 2. And my anti-clockwise moments, well, that was just the original weight of the rod multiplied by its distance which was two thirds. So where do I get to now? Now I wanted to give the tension of B in terms of W and K so I've got two lots of the tension at B is equal to two thirds of W minus KW so the tension at B is going to be equal to, dividing this all through by two, is one third of W minus k over 2w. Now we might want to tidy that up but essentially we're done at this point. We could say that the tension at b is equal to factorising out the w 1 third minus k over 2 and I believe that the mark scheme for this question goes even one step further and says that you could write this as w over 6 lots of 2 minus 3k Right, last part of this question we're looking to find a set of possible values for K for which both ropes remain taut. Now for the ropes to remain taut we need to ensure that the tension is positive so I want the tension in B to be greater than zero. Now also thinking about where K comes from, K is a multiple of W that is attached at D so K itself has to be a positive value. So we want k to be strictly greater than zero. Whoops. And I want the tension at b to be strictly greater than zero. Well what is the tension at b? We worked that out in the previous question. To say that the tension at b is greater than zero is the same as saying that w on 6 lots of 2 minus 3k should be greater than zero. And if that's going to be true, I know that W is greater than zero because that's a the weight of the object and we can't have negative weight. So what we're going to have here is that 2 minus 3k must be greater than zero. Or that 2 must be greater than 3k. Or if I then divide by 3, I find out that 2 thirds must be greater than k. And now I'm done because I know that k needs to be greater than zero and I also need to know that k must be less than two thirds so my final answer is zero less than k less than two thirds. <laughs>